Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Davis. If you're interested in videos on career building, personal finance, or wealth building, click the subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you don't miss out on my next video. I'm not an ex-tech lead or an ex-Facebook engineer, but I've graduated twice and I'm currently a software engineer. First off, if you just graduated, congratulations. Yay! Give yourself a thumbs up by clicking the like button. In this video, I'm gonna cover the main things you should do to land a job right outside of college, even if you have no experience. I'm gonna cover the job boards that you should be on, how you should update your resume to land more interviews, and also what you should expect during your job hunt. Stay to the end of the video to get two tips that most people don't talk about that will definitely help you land more interviews. So the first thing you need to know is where are all the jobs posted? I'm gonna provide you with a list of eight different job boards that you should definitely use during your job hunt. The reason why you wanna use so many job boards is because multiple companies use different job boards and this will just help you increase the pool of jobs that you can apply to and you'll be able to see a larger variety of jobs. So in no particular order, the eight job boards that you should look at are Indeed, ZipRecruiter, LinkedIn, Career Builder, Glassdoor, Simply Hired, and then finally your school's career portal. Please keep in mind these are not the only job boards and you should definitely look out for industry specific job boards. I know for software engineers there's Dice.com or Engineering.com which most engineering companies will post there and you won't see jobs posted on there on say LinkedIn or Indeed. So keep that in mind. And the last thing is be sure to reach out to your friends and family and tell them that you're looking for a job, what your major is and what roles you're interested in. You never know what might pop up. So now that you know what job boards to use, the next thing you want to look into is figure out what roles you're interested in. To start, just look around at different job boards, look at different industries. Don't even just look at entry level jobs, look at positions that you're potentially interested in a few years down the line. It doesn't matter if you have experience or not. This is just a preliminary list to explore potential job options and to start narrowing things down to see which roles fit your skills for the things that you studied in school. From there, once you have your list, narrow it down to three to five different roles or job titles that you're interested in because various companies will have different names for the same exact role, but you'll get a good feel for it once you start doing the research. So when you're looking at the individual job listings, the things you want to pay attention to are the key skills and the job requirements because they're going to show up over and over again on the various job postings. What you want to do is look at between 10 and 20 job postings once you've narrowed down the specific roles you're interested in. When you're looking at the job postings, there's going to come a time where you run into a term or a skill or a technology that you might have never even heard of. That's happened to me plenty of times and what you want to do is just start building up a list of those terms and then start googling them and just get a high level overview because once you do that, it'll help you immensely in the next step. An example of job requirements appearing over and over again would be for roles such as accounting or business analysts. There would be terms such as compiling reports or generating reports or doing some kind of data analysis. Or if you're a graphic designer, you're probably gonna have to know the Adobe suite or have specific requirements for projects at school. Or for software engineers, there's gonna be requirements to know scripting languages, object-oriented programming, or version control, or different operating systems, Linux, Mac, or Windows. You're just gonna see those same terms repeated again and again. Some companies are gonna have more, some companies are gonna have less. Just keep it in mind as you're doing your job hunt research. So now that you know the specific titles you're interested in, the skills that are required, and the job requirements, the next thing you want to do is update your resume to reflect these things. If you haven't updated your resume in a while or you're just starting out fresh, the first thing you want to do is list out the skills you know. You want to list out the projects you've done, whether it be in, from a course or whether it be from your club or you went to a hackathon. You just want to have all the things you've done in the past four years listed on your resume, including your degree, if your GPA is under a 3.0, don't list that. Uh, we can get into that another time. So remember that list of technology or skills I told you to keep track of? The ones that you have no idea what they were when you were doing your job research? Well, this is where that comes in handy. 
From here, what you want to do is take the skills that you've listed on your resume from your courses and correlate them to the skills of the job postings that are most similar. Because what's going to happen is you're going to see job postings where you don't meet all the requirements. You've never seen this technology or you've never worked with this modeling tool. And that's okay. What you want to do is at least do the research so that when you head into the interview, you say, hey, I don't know this particular technology or I haven't worked on this particular skill, but in school I've worked on something very similar and I've done research on what you guys use and I don't think it's going to be a problem for me to transition in and build up my skills. Sometimes what happens is on the job postings, there's enterprise tools that students are just never ever going to use. For me, when I graduated um, with my finance degree, I saw a lot of ERP systems, that's enterprise resource planning, and these are like multi-million dollar software systems. And a student is literally never going to come across that. Or for software engineering, there might be some ridiculous requirements of one to three years of experience in, say, Java or C++ for an entry-level job. It just doesn't make sense. And you'll just start to see these patterns happen over and over and over again, and you'll just know, like, the requirements for here is uh, nice to have, but realistically, nobody's ever going to have that unless it's like a grad student or somebody has been working and they just finished their degree. Um, for those, just apply anyways and just let the system either weed you out. But if it says entry level, you should be good to go. your resume, you want to list any jobs that you've had, whether it be in food or retail. It's OK if it's not directly relevant to the jobs that you're applying for because the hiring managers know like you just graduated from college and you're applying for an entry-level job. Um, having these roles actually helps because then you can show that you've worked somewhere successfully, you've been a reliable person there, and the skills that you've learned there, but while they're not directly relevant, you know, still help because you're able to communicate well, you're able to do detail-oriented work, and those skills will directly transfer over and help you during your interview. And of course, if you have relevant internship experience or part-time job experience, you definitely want to list that on your resume. And if you don't, the order of importance is first list any relevant internships or part-time jobs at the top. Under that, you want to put relevant course projects or club projects. And then under that, any non-relevant jobs just to show that you have a job history. For the projects that you're listing, the reason why you want to list them under your experience is because they are an experience. While they may not be a professional experience, these are valuable skills that you've learned to show that you're able to complete a project from beginning and end, whether it be by yourself or in a group project. So if you haven't already, give yourself a thumbs up by clicking the like button. If you want a video specifically on how to list your skills and projects on your resume, comment down below because it's the same animal, but a different beast. All right, now that we've got the potatoes and meat out of the way, now it's time to dive into things people don't really talk about during the job hunt. The next tip I have is to reset your expectations. I know you're excited because you just finished school and you just got your degree, but realistically, so did thousands of others. They have similar skills as you. Multiple people are gonna be applying to the same jobs and job hunting journey is a long one and it's gonna take time. Keep in mind that companies move slowly. It just depends on the industry. I mean, it could be fast as two weeks. It can be as slow as two months. Just remember, other people are going to be interviewing. Managers are busy. They have to schedule interviews. You have to do background checks. You might even have multiple levels of interviews, maybe even group interviews. So yeah, it's going to take time. So the next thing you want to shift for your expectations is treat the job hunting journey as a big experiment. Treat it as a whole learning journey because you're going to want to be tweaking your resume as you go. Maybe you start applying and you don't hear back for three or four weeks. Then have somebody outside, your friends or family, look at your resume. Ask industry professionals like, hey, what should I tweak for my resume? And then from there, maybe you're starting to land interviews, but things might not be going your way. So take notes, start doing some reflection, and then even ask the people who interviewed you for feedback. Ask them on things like um, maybe why you didn't get the job or if um, 
they notice of any specific things that you can improve upon. You're just going to have to adjust as you go and you know it's not going to be perfect as you're starting out. So my next tip is a really important tip and it's when you're applying for jobs, treat it as a full-time job. So try to set a schedule and get the ball rolling for looking at jobs and then applying for jobs. What I recommend is to wake up every morning and start applying and don't hesitate to apply because if you wait then maybe 10 or 20 other people with similar skills and experience that have applied and then when you apply it might be too late so keep that in mind. Once you've applied and you're just waiting, the next thing you want to do is practice your behavioral questions and if you have a technical question or whiteboarding or you need to present some kind of portfolio, you want to be practicing that every single day. You know, work with your friends by practicing. Just uh, stay warmed up because you never know whether you're going to have an interview tomorrow or next week. You know, when it rains it pours usually, like you won't hear anything for some time and then two or three weeks later you have like three or four interviews you know things companies just move slowly and you never know so just always try to be ready and as you're applying keep track of the companies that you've applied to and when and then also um, take a screenshot of the job roles because sometimes what happens is you applied and then you don't hear back for a month because they have so many applicants and then the job posting has gone and then you have an interview and you don't really remember what the specific job requirements are. That's actually happened to me a few times, so just keep that in mind. If you want a video on behavioral questions or how to talk about your project, comment down below because those are huge topics on their own and that's kind of out of the scope of this video. So the next and most important tip is take care of your mental health by not going through this job hunting journey alone. Have friends and families that you can talk to, have friends and families where you can practice with because it's going to take a long time. You have no idea how long it's going to take for you from the moment that you graduate to the day that you land your job. It could be weeks, it could be months, and you know, you're going to go through a roller coaster of emotions. Right now, you're probably excited, you're ready to apply, but you know, you're going to be excited now and then you're going to get an interview request and then you're going to be a little bit nervous and then maybe during the interview you might be anxious and then after that you're waiting to hear back and you know you're even more anxious and maybe it's one week or two weeks between the time that they respond to you maybe you'll go through self-doubt and then you know the worst part is just you might get rejected and you might feel a little bit defeated so you're gonna go through a wild journey I mean hopefully for most of you guys that doesn't happen but normally from what I've seen and from my friends you know this is just purely anecdotal that the job hunting journey is tough and you know it's really helpful to have friends and families to speak to so that you're not just either beating yourself up or being too hard on yourself because there are a lot of things that are outside of your control but you know control the things that you can you know updating your resume getting feedback practicing with your friends and you'll be totally fine thanks for watching this video again congrats on graduating and best of luck on your job hunting journey if you haven't already given yourself a thumbs up just click the like button down below comment down below if you have any suggestions for videos that I can make or if you want a video on salary negotiation or interview preparation I click the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss my next video on five mistakes to avoid when applying for your next job thanks for watching I'll see you guys on the next video